Hey, what's going on, YouTubulous? EXO coming at you here with something pretty interesting today. Been gotten lots and lots of messages and comments about my batteries. I'm upgrading to lithium from my AGMs, and in doing so, lots of people are curious as to why. Is there really a big difference between going from, you know, different technologies of batteries? So today, I figured we'd do a little test here of some lead acid batteries, AGM batteries, and of course, the JY Lithium 80 amp hour lithium battery. We have a little load tester here from Harbor Freight, just a little cheapo special. It goes up to 500 amps and it's bound to get pretty hot today. So let's put her through her paces as we test these batteries and see if there is a difference between going up in price range and size range. All right, let's get into it. We'll start out with the Megatron Group 51 and do a quick voltage measurement before we do an amperage test. It's been a couple few weeks since we've done a fresh charge on this battery, so the surface charge shouldn't be so bad. We're at 12.68 volts. Now, ordinarily, that would be a great lead acid battery level, but you'll never know until you put a nice draw on it, which is exactly why we have this bad boy. This is a battery load tester from Harbor Freight. It uses resistive loads to put out a constant draw against your battery to see how much juice it can produce. It flows through these power lines right into here, and then it's resisted, and then it's displayed. Basically, anything below 9.6 volts, according to this, is a fail. This particular battery has a rating of 500 cold cranking amps, so we'll make sure to go up to 250 on our load tester. This tool works really simple. All we need to do is turn this again and again as you see the amperage go up, and we'll need to pay super close attention because something kind of strange happened while using this tester. Keep watching this needle right here as we turn the knob up, and bam! right there see how it just reset back to zero pretty far into its crank maybe that's what caused the problem we end up finding out in this video and to be honest it just got worse let's just say our onboard meters aren't exactly as they appear stick around and let's figure this out together so we are at 10 volts she's slowly going down though we got a couple tenths to go i'll, I'll hold it for a little more oh we got smoke coming out of the top oh god Let's try it one more time at 500 amps to see how low this battery goes when you have that big of a draw. Uh, she's not even going up that high, what the heck? It won't even go up that high. But we're at nine volts and we're smoking again. But realistically, batteries like this aren't meant for deep discharge, deep cycle applications. So at the end of the day, being able to put out a couple hundred amps really isn't so bad. It just can't do it at a high enough voltage where our amplifiers wouldn't go in to protect. Nine volts, not so good. Next up, we got a much bigger battery with the XP3000 from XX Power. This is a Group 31 12 volt battery. And with the higher energy density, we are resting at 12.98 volts. So let's hook her on up to the load tester and do a comparison of the 250 amp run from our Megatron to our XP Series 3000. Let's crank her right up. 250, oh, went back down. I must have like a little dead spot in the knob there. So there we go, 250, and she's holding 11. Nice and strong, almost a volt higher than our Megatron. So now let's go ahead and try a 500 amp test and basically just turn this all the way up and see how she reacts. Crank it up as fast as we can. Bam, all the way, baby. Ugh, that's as much as we can get out of this damn tester. Maybe I have a defective tester, because we're at 350, holding, holding over 10 volts, 350. I can't get any more out of this thing. Let's turn her down. She's smoking good. So, what did we just learn? Harbor Freight load testers aren't always as specified. So the only way to really test that is to jump over to our lithium battery right here. If anything can put out 500 amps, it's this thing right here. Now this battery is going to rest slightly higher than the rest because they're comprised of four 3.2 volt cells instead of six roughly two volt cells. So with that said, let's go ahead and do another 250 amp run like our other two batteries 
and see what the difference is for our holding voltage. Make sure that we get past that damn spot in the knob, Harbor Freight Special. See, just went all the way back down. I wonder what that, if that's the problem. There we go, 250 amps, holding a little bit over. And we're at 12 volts, just a little bit under 12 volts at 250. And our freaking terminal up here, our terminal is getting so hot that it's starting to smoke, not even the uh, carbon inside the case. So let's go ahead and crank her up as high as we can. This is when I really started doubting these onboard meters. Something just wasn't adding up and the accuracy seemed to be getting worse and worse each time the needles did that little wonky reset move. After the full 15 seconds, the likely culprit was staring us right in the face the entire time. Check that out and look at, oh God, our friggin' terminals are getting so hot. Red hot, red hot terminals over there. Holy smoke, let's turn that down. So there we go, guys. We got friggin' smoke coming out off of our terminals over here. I don't know if you can see that, but they were just smoking up pretty damn good. And since we both just witnessed that, it's a great time to stress how important your connections are. I guarantee if there was a nice, secure, bolt-on connection right here, heat would not be nearly as high generated. I mean, essentially, all of that amperage is only being delivered to the very tips of those alligator clips, and they only make contact in very few places. So no wonder we're burning up the very ends of them, you know what I mean? Loose connections are the devil of car audio, and an alligator clip really exemplifies that. So here's what I was just thinking, because the connection is so weak and downright inadequate, I wonder if our results this whole time have been inaccurate. So I'm going to do a quick lower amperage test and do a comparison with our true RMS clamp meter on the line and see what the difference is on the display here. That whole time we could have been doing complete different numbers, but we won't know until we test it. Get everything all set up with our meters and there we go. We are ready to crank it. Let's go ahead and keep an eye on our meters and we're not going to push any peak hold. We're going to keep it real time so we can see the rebound and we're going to start out on a low amperage 100 amp and then 200 amp just to see what the discrepancy is here so we can apply it to the other tests. So let's go ahead and do the first low amperage test at 100. Crank it right up. It says 100 on our unit here and we're at almost 200 amps. Look at that and rising 186, 187 at 11 volts and this says 9.8. So that is not good. This was very inaccurate on the voltmeter and also very inaccurate on the amp meter. So let's go ahead and try 200 amps and see what the discrepancy is with that. And then we'll try to um, distribute that across the board because we've obviously been doing some testing on this battery. We don't wanna go crazy on her without a fresh charge. So there's 200 amps. And we're at 350 at the 200 amp needle. So that's almost 150 amps off than our uh, onboard measurement here. So that is definitely good to know and changes the beginning of this video because we were putting out way more amperage than we thought in the beginning. So we'll go ahead and do a quick fast paced montage to do a before and after measurement using true RMS and these little onboard needles here. Goodness gracious, those onboard meters just got worse and worse, barely even going up to where they were in the beginning of this video, which brings us to the point of our good old Megatron redemption here. In the beginning of this video, we were told that the 250 amp run was bringing us down to 9.8 volts, but little did we know that 250 was actually 350. So when we did the true RMS 250 amp run, we were actually at 10 Point four volts. So 
I'm gonna take what I said back in the beginning of this video where I was like, oh man, it only put out a couple hundred amps before being in that range where your amps will go into protect mode. It really wasn't so bad. And then when we jumped over to the maximum test, it showed itself even more saying 300 amps at nine volts when in reality, we were doing 390 amps at 9.7 volts. So that is a great pass and well overrated performance. And then jumping over into the XP3000, supposedly we were doing 250 amps at 10.9 volts, but that whole time we were doing 350 amps and the real life score was 11.4. So that is 0.5 volts higher than what it was telling us in the beginning. And then for its maximum test, we were told we were only seeing 350 amps at 10.3 volts, but we were actually seeing 415 amps at 10.6 volts. So a better score with getting more accurate measurements. So that's why if you re-watch this video and pay super close attention, I added tiny little words underneath the supposed scores or amperage draw so you can kind of get the, the, the real deal clues along the way. And with the biggest differences is our JY80 amp hour. In the beginning, it said we were at 11.7 volts at 250 amps. Although we were pulling 350 amps, we were still at 12.4 volts, but we wouldn't have known that because we were being told something completely different. So the real world 250 amp score came in at 256 amps at 12.6, well above the amplifier range of being nice and happy. That is a beautiful little battery right there at the 250 range. For its maximum test, we were told it was doing 350 amps at 11 volts, but in reality, we were doing 443 amps at 12.3 volts. So that is a lot of amperage draw and still above the 12 volt marker. We got a great little difference in almost a one volt across the board difference. Even with the same amperage draw, it just kept getting higher and higher voltage. And that's exactly what you want for keeping your aftermarket electronics, your equipment, your amplifiers happy. And on top of that, talk about night and day difference between the onboard accuracy of these meters and a true handheld multimeter clamp meter type style. So what can we take home from this? Let's take a step back for a second and see if we can deduce where all this went wrong. I mean, the instrumentation seemed to be good from the start, at least on the voltmeter side, and we all saw how that knob kind of reset itself. So what do you say we revisit this tool and do some upgrading and some tinkering inside and maybe at the end of the day, get these two little meters to be a little more accurate. Who knows? Maybe if we bust it open, we can see something wrong if there is, because something definitely feels a little weird in Dogtown. So at the end of the day, I think this video may be able to help some people and get a better understanding of how things behave under load and how every day is a new chance to learn something. So thanks for watching the videos, guys. And if you enjoyed it, be sure to stick around and subscribe. I've got all sorts of different stuff coming up and I have a pretty fun time doing it. So let's have some fun together. All right, guys, until the next video, this is EXO signing out until next time. Bye -bye.